Chicago has my heart. Don't ask me to leave. Don't force me to go. When the coast call, when the rents rise, when the city I know is unrecognizable, it's mine, not alone, not to own. Chicago has my heart. It's like ultimate selfie. <laughs> you tell us what to do. I don't know! This is so weird! I am Raven Benet, and I am a singer from Chicago, singer-songwriter. I like to I like to create a universe through words, through through my voice, because I'm a storyteller. Guys, make sure you got a bag, have it open. They're gonna check that inside. Rock out. You ready to rock out? Okay, good, man. My name is Andrew Barber, and I am the founder and the creator of Fake Short Drive. My drive is to keep Chicago hip hop on the map, to fight for the underdog, and continue to make this scene huge factor within the music industry. Chicago is the greatest place in the world. It's also one of the worst. Let's go to the poem. It's a series of these portraits in some ways about a broader relationship and a broader history. You know, it's like a person. You know, you can't just love the parts of a person that are easy to love. You know, I want to be held accountable for making sure that it grows in the way that it ensures that we can all be here. Nice to see you all. We got Raven. Thank you for coming. Raven, I like your hair, I like your vans, I like your fit, I like your music. When I look out at this crowd, I just see a bunch of smiling, happy faces ready to make some movie magic. Let's make the music video. And uh, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. Music stems from a couple of different places. One, I would say, is my personal experiences and my everyday trials and um, joys. But then it also comes from a place of me creating this, this fantasy world in my head. I just like to put myself in that place, in this world where I am like the ruler and I can determine how it goes, who says what, how they say it, you know? With these characters, I'm able to, to speak through them. They're able to speak through me. And I feel like in a way, I'm protecting myself and protecting my deep, darkest secrets, you know, by, by telling these character secrets. If you understand that you're on someone's land and you never, never, never find the words to say that there's no other way Connecting with people through music definitely means that I'm touching a part of them that words or actions just can't. And it's to give that person an escape and in a world to live in for a moment, you know? It just gives you a chance to kind of branch off into this, this untraveled land that only you're able to walk in.
what's up? I think so. Where, where, where are we right now? No kidding? I mean, we're, we jumped like 300, you know, in 24 hours, and we still have, you know, four hours before, five hours before doors, so. You know, hopefully all this marketing that we've done will pay off in a big way tonight. I think it will. Day to day is, it's always different. Typically I have a couple meetings, you know, answering emails, getting on the phone, talking to people, checking in with artists, updating the blog. I rarely miss a day with that. And then just like listening to music, checking stuff out, you know, pretty much working until I go to sleep. Tonight we have a Red Bull Sound Select show at Talia Hall I'm with Smoke Perp, Valet, and C. Honcho. We've been part of the Red Bull Sound Select program for five years now. It's really just a music discovery show, right? So you get a, a, a bigger name headliner, and what we typically do is just, you know, put on uh, some local, some rising local talent who are on the verge of breaking through or starting to break through and, and put them, you know, as direct support. And some of the artists that we've, we've, we've you know, brought into the program or put on these shows early on have gone on to blow up tremendously, you know, from Chance the Rapper to Vic Menta, the whole Save Money family, and, you know, all these different artists that we've brought in through Sound Selects. You know, we, we, we try to get those guys early, right before you can't afford them anymore, <laughs> before they blow up and get too expensive. Letting me be a part of, of y'all's morning and your day. Um, so, you know, I, I believe a, a few things. I think uh, one is that all of us have something to tell. Too often we only hear these like really problematic, monolithic narratives about what it means to be in Chicago, what it means to be particularly a young person in Chicago, and probably what it means to be a young person from certain communities in the city of Chicago. And those narratives are propelled by everything that's messed up with the world. What I would love to do today is have an opportunity to hear about who y'all are, um, where you come from, and I want you to write a piece that is a bit of a, you know, it, like a letter to the city, right? Technically, poetically, it'd be called an epistolary poem, but just a letter to addressing, like, where you come from. Um, and I want you to take into consideration, like, the myriad of feelings you might have about that place, the good things, the bad things, everything in between, and be as specific as possible. Make it hot, make it fresh. Good luck, don't be nice. And uh, yeah, eight minutes. I think my mission is to change the cultural landscape of the city and to bring people closer together. Uh, I think part of what my hope is is to really create spaces where people can be together, uh, to hear one another, to build with one another, to do disagree with one another, and I think, you know, to imagine a different kind of city. And often that would be through, you know, maybe shared ideas, but also a, you know, the difficult and necessary process of you know, critical discourse as well, where we can be with ideas that might differ and also come to some sort of consensus about the way forward as a city. And then, you know, hopefully imagine a path ahead. And when you're ready, uh, you can put your pen down or maybe finish the thought <clears throat> that you're working on. I would love to hear these, so you want, do you want to kick it off and, and go first, you mind? Um, okay. Inglewood, Chicago. A place where I live, but continuously fall short from the expectations of home. Where you hear mothers crying, screaming, and grieving every morning because she can no longer hug her child or tell them good morning or fix them a breakfast. Where you hear gunshots and police sirens every night. Where I refuse to build relationships because everyone that I had grown to love and trust 
were heartlessly taken, ripped from my life and ripped from my heart. It hurts, always. I miss you, look, Greg. I miss you, Sandy. I love you. Save me a spot, Huncho. I am from Inglewood, where you sit on the porch and see drug dealers and the junkie slash mother on the corner with her baby, with her baby son trading his lunch money for her next fix. <laughs> Hang in there, little dude. Where we have rallies and parades in memory of those who lives were taken unjustly by a police officer screaming Black Lives Matter at the top of our lungs, but somehow failing to realize that Black Lives Matter. Where mothers are told Happy Father's Day and children miss childhoods because there is only time to hustle or watch your family struggle. Welcome to Chicago, Inglewood, where I live, but it's such a long way from home. has definitely changed over the years, naturally. I actually couldn't sing at first. I just wasn't really good at it, which is natural, you know? Like anything else, you have to work at it and put time into it. Learning classical music and being classically trained really taught me to apply my voice and to treat my voice as a, as a jewel, you know, because it is. <laughs> to call it a musical renaissance because it is a new wave of, of music and art that's happening right now. One sec, let me get my words. I definitely feel like I'm a part of a, of a, of a very important musical movement that people will note and I feel special. I'm thinking, should I do it like that or should I do them stacked but soft? I would just say a little bit more careless. Gotcha. I feel like the first half could be better, but the second half, you're nailing it. OK. One more time. One more time. One more time. Let's try that again. Again. Let's try it again. Why is it so hard? You got it. OK. We're all young. We're all in our late teens, early 20s, you know? How does that happen? How do we all start here? How are we all the same age? How are we all this young, but all know exactly what we want to do and doing it? storm right now. There's nobody in here. As you can see, it's a beautiful historic venue. That's why I really like doing shows here, because it has like a really unique look to it. it sounds really good. The vibe is really cool. Um, so it's fun to see it without, you know, uh, people in here and, you know, empty. Because so it'll look different once the lights go out later. Midwest, Chicago in particular, 
has always been an underdog in the industry, despite being such a huge market. I think a lot of times people uh, treat the Midwest or, you know, Chicago like we're just flyover states, like there's nothing out here. Like we don't create culture. Um, we just consume culture, but that's not the case. You look at some of the biggest artists that have come out of here recently, from Chance the Rapper to Kanye West, they're two of the most influential people in music and they drive culture. I think um, 2012 was the year that really kicked it off. And I think some people thought it was only gonna last a year, like it wouldn't last. But here we are, you know, five years later, five years removed from 2012 and it's still booming. So it's not, it's not the case. The case is we do create culture and you know, my job is to, to help expose that and then find the new people who are creating the culture and who will be, um, you know, the future leaders and the future stars. I met Chance probably five or six years ago, Chance the Rapper, he came to my office one day. Um, <laughs> and I just, when he walked in, and I'd been seeing, I'd been hearing about him and I knew of him. And then when I met him, I was like, okay, this dude is out of here. Like, I, you know, I didn't know he was gonna be like the most famous person I ever met in my life, but I knew he was gonna be big. And, you know, you just recognize that and try to get behind him and help him get opportunities, get him on shows. And, you know, once you just put, put a little gas on it, it's out of here. And, you know, for me, that all came full circle when he won his first Grammy uh, this year. Yo, Andrew Barber. He thanked me. He said my name. That was like the craziest moment. I love my family, I love God, and I love music. Thank you, guys. Sometimes people don't forget about you. So that's definitely one of the most proud moments of my career, if not the most. I owe him one. So glad that y'all are in the building. My name is Kevin Koval. I'm the artistic director at Young Chicago Authors. For those that don't know, Young Chicago Authors is a safe space. Safe space. Right? And what that means, how we feel about that, that means here on this stage, there will be no racist, racist. Sexist, sexist, homophobic, homophobic gender biased, gender biased ableist, ableist, ageist, ageist anti-religious, anti transphobic, transphobic, or otherwise fuck shit type of language allowed on this stage. So look, over the last bunch of years, this space has become a very special place for the city of Chicago very special place for this moment in hip-hop cultural practice. And I think one of the reasons why that is so is because the young man who's about to come feature in this space, it's a long time that we've been waiting for him to come home. And he's home. One of the founding members of the Pivot Gang. Without further ado, young Chicago authors, stand the fuck up. Welcome home, Fresh Waters. <laughs> Kevin Coble. Hey, hola, hola. Uh, before we start, I just want to say one thing. Uh, YCA, thank you for being here. You was in the sky. I seen you one day. I was just walking down the street with one of my homies, and I'm like, I got to check that spot out. And eventually did, and it changed my life. I lost my mans to gunshots. I woke up to police knocks. Man, it ain't never steal where the metal's still on waste. Savor the memories, can't savor the taste of what it would have and what it could have and what should have been us. We went from riding a bus to you pushing your mom's trucks. Remember that? All black, navvy, back when Eddie Bauer had these phonies flagging the ride. Same time, Broham doors was suicide. Shit was smooth and sad. Winters was rough, summers was timeless. All the chickens was the finest, then the sauce got thick. Too much taste in the flavors and got lost in the shh. Stop wishing on the wishing wheel, and when they talk, I don't listen well. Y'all shells stay in touch. It's a must. I give a fuck for a bus. Church. We are at Lollapalooza. 
Caleb. We are very excited to be here with Raven. She's about to perform on the stage. We've been doing this for like the last three years, and this is probably the biggest festival that she's actually been blessed to do. So this is a, a huge moment for her, huge. Man, you guys, come on. Let me see the wristbands, guys. Green wristband. All right, you got a green wristband, red wristband, you're all right. I hope this can be put on a DJ booth. No smoking, no smoking on stage. This is a, such a big city. It's such a segregated city. It's such a dynamic city. It's a city of hate. It's a city of love. It's a culturally rich city. There's a lot of people that come from different backgrounds, different pockets of town. You know, people can grow up down the street from each other, and they're seeing the city in two different ways. And the hip hop community is bringing people together. Whereas the city's very segregated, hip hop is bringing these people together to share ideas. And people that may have not spoken up on things, you know, years ago and be like, man, that's messed up. I'm gonna speak up on that. I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna use my power for good and use my power to bring awareness. The truth is, is that we continue to uphold the legacy and the history of white supremacy in this country. You know, the truth is, is that, you know, we have a far, far way to go to have equity and parity in this country. First of all, I will say that being a black woman in general is a very beautiful thing, but it also comes with its challenges. You are looked past, um, you're judged, you're put into this box where you feel that you're, you, you can't get out and having someone or something literally put their hand over the box and watch you try to get out. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I feel like that feeling is just passed down genetically. The truth is, is that our whole country is built on the maintenance of that lie. You know, the lie that, you know, whiteness, white men, straight culture is better than anyone else or deserves more than anyone else. And that is a fallacy that, you know, very few people benefit from continuing to perpetuate and believe in. has to be about imagining a different reality because if we only rely on the tropes that have gotten us here we'll repeat the same kind of divisiveness that keeps communities separate and you know I want a different world imagine if the crowds in Times Square were dancing instead of dodging singing instead of yelling could you imagine the party cab horns be our base 
I'm talking cypher circles at every corner. This life be our tracks, our crack, our motivation to dream. See, hip hop was born in this city. We scribble words on these walls. America called it vandalism. Well, fuck her because this be our art. Our hearts keep us warm. Subway stations be our sanctuaries. You hear noise, we hear beautiful symphonies. This is the best moment in the history of the city. It's because young people are so dope, you know, and fearless. And because every day there's something that challenges their lives, like their humanity. And so in the face of that, they are creating. did right. I came, I provided a platform. I hope people see that I helped, you know, bring light to the hip hop scene here and help usher it in to the new era. I feel like we come into this world with half a heart. And with everything, it grows a little bit, you know? whether it's uh, finding your passion a little bit, finding love a little bit, giving out that love, you know? All those things makes your heart whole. And if you leave this world with a full heart, then that is a beautiful life, and that's what I want. Chicago has my heart. My heart is all the people who make it, who are making it barely, who have a limit and can break. Chicago, you have my heart my whole history, my people you saved seeking refuge here. We will turn our backs on the capital wage slaves you've made us become. We will burn your memory and effigy and house dance in the afterglow. We rise, Chicago, our fire will burn.